You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. rollermartinunfiltered.com. One of the issues we're also dealing with right now, folks, is how do we get people to actually believe uh, in the science and take the COVID-19 vac- COVID vaccine? Bishop T.D. Jakes and I sat down today, had a conversation about this, and what he is doing to get people to understand, to have the right information and not be victims of misinformation when it comes to the vaccine. Bishop, Bishop Jakes, always good to see you, talk to you. Uh, say hello to all my folks there in Dallas. I still own a home there. Uh, my parents are there. And, you know, I've only been able to uh, see them one time since the pandemic. I flew to Dallas. I'm still registered to vote there. I flew there in October. Uh, got you to see my parents uh, the first time. And, and, and this has really been so difficult on lots of people. We're used to family reunions. We're used to Thanksgiving and Christmas and birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, and, and, and so for you, uh, for someone who travels way more than even than I do, how, are, how have you had to cope with, um, uh, to cope with this? Uh, first of all, Roland, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be a part of anything that you're doing. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it, I, I want to say it's been very difficult and that, that it's been very stressful. And I want to say, uh, being a pastor, uh, the stats that we incur from the pandemic become the realities for us because we bury the numbers. And we know that the numbers are not numbers. We're at 420,000 people are dead. They turn into funerals for us. So we see the families, we see the pain, we see the tragedies, and we're trying to service them through masks and social distancing and feed families without touching families who are grieving. Uh, it's been difficult, but but I'm a little uh, reticent to really say that because when I look at the families themselves and realize how much harder it's been for them than it has been for me, I'm embarrassed to complain about any inconveniences or pain that I had. Uh, my children are healthy, my wife and I are healthy, and all in all, we came out well. But the reality is we all are impacted. Our churches are impacted. We're not having in-person services. We are, our business are, businesses are suffering, all of those different things. Uh, and so this is one of those things that it doesn't matter how much money you got. Dave Chappelle recently tested positive uh, for COVID-19. We've lost other folks uh, for it as well. And so, uh, so we all, this thing does not discriminate your money cannot, your, your money and your faith, I mean, look, you've had, uh, look, I, Bishop Harry Jackson, who was, uh, you had that, that, that event at your church uh, with, with a conversation between him and uh, uh, Paula White, uh, and, uh, 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 Joshua Dubois, uh, April mm-hmm. Ryan, Father Michael Flager. He passed right. away uh, due to COVID. And so it, it doesn't discriminate. No, it doesn't. And then when you look at an organization like ours, we've, people see me, but there are 300 employees that, that I'm trying to keep paid while we're, our doors are closed. I'm trying to keep from laying them off and their families adjoining the food lines that we have been feeding. We've been feeding thousands and thousands of families and I'm trying to keep my staff out of those food lines uh, with the doors closed to the church. So it's been very difficult. We had to pivot in our approach to ministry. We were able to pivot fairly quickly because we were used to streaming anyway, but we were not used to streaming where the entire organization was dependent right. upon streaming to do it. So that's a whole different animal. Uh, it's been tough. A lot of our businesses are closed. A lot of our people are unemployed. A lot of our restaurants are shut down. Uh, it's taken a toll, particularly on people of color who provide service oriented type jobs more readily than other people groups. So black and brown people have been disproportionately economically affected by the challenge and disproportionately affected by the disease itself, incurring it more readily, living in smaller spaces, not able to socially distance in a two bedroom apartment with six people in it. It becomes very difficult to socially distance. Uh, information, information, information is so vital. And, and one of the things that that we uh, have to look at, even if you look at on the political side, black people 
were greatly impacted by voter misinformation. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about COVID. I, I, Bishop, it, it, is, it is stunning to me what I am hearing from our people. Um, the comments, when we talk about a vaccine, oh God, no. I mean, uh, Henry Hank Aaron just passed away, took a COVID shot. People are like, oh, that's it. COVID, that, the shot killed him. So <laughs> h- how are you, as, as a leader, uh, now dealing with this in terms of uh, getting our people to understand that disproportionately more of us have died from COVID than anybody else? In the medical arena, nearly 30% of the medical workers who have died are black. How do we deal with this fear of black people and this readiness to latch onto uh, these conspiracy theories and misinformation and folk bring up Tuskegee and everything else? How, how are you dealing with that? Well, first of all, <laughs> it's understandable that we would be skeptical of anything uh, coming from the science field because of the history and some of the atrocities that have been done to black people, not only through the Tuskegee experiment, but through uh, uh, the high rates of childbirth deaths in the black community. When you look at the high rates of hysterectomies done on black women, there's a lot of reasons why we would be uh, a little bit concerned. But what what we are after more than anything is truth. You know, Jesus said, you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And we're living in the time that truth is ambiguous and, and very difficult to find and to focus on. And so what I did was to use my platform to bring together experts to have an open, honest, frank discussion about what is going on with this vaccination. Where are we with the virus? What are, the, what are the ramifications if you're pregnant? What are the ramifications uh, if you're of a certain age? Uh, what are the ramifications if you're on certain types of medications? Uh, just to ask some very thorough questions that I wasn't seeing asked as often as I would like to in mainstream media and to have an opportunity to have four professionals of the level that I did, one of them being my own personal physician co-hosting with me, we were able to really get down to the bottom of some things. And I put it on my YouTube channel so that anybody could go to it and access it and then make their own informed decisions. I'm not trying to tell people what to do. I'm just exposing them with the kind of information that helps them to make informed choices. This, to me, I really believe, Bishop, for those of us who our people look up to, this is probably going to be one of the biggest challenges we've ever faced, uh, trying to fight uh, the fear and the misinformation. Uh, and, and we know black folks trust in more from a black source. The studies don't lie. Black people get better care from black doctors and black medical professionals than they do anyone else. And one of the things that I did with my show from the moment COVID hit, and we probably, I dare say, have done 80 to 100 COVID segments. I purposely put on black experts from HBCUs, black doctors, black uh, black, uh, infectious disease specialists. I wanted our people to see African-Americans speaking on these issues. And that also, I think, is just important having black experts say, hey, we feel y'all, we're in this, but we're the experts. Listen to us on this. That's one of the reasons I had uh, Dr. Kismikia Corbett to to be on the panel, because she was one of the epidemiologists that created the vaccine and happens to be a black woman and happens to be a black woman of faith. And I brought her on because I thought that she would add credibility to the discussion, that she could dispel myths uh, about the vaccine, that she could help us to walk through the process. And then uh, Dr. Ogu, Agu, I went to the opposite side, Yale University, not connected to anybody uh, re- related to Dr. Fauci, so that we could get different people from different streams of consciousness to weigh in in an objective way and have a holistic conversation about what does it mean to take the vaccination, what does it mean to not take the vaccination, and what are the consequences of the choices that we're about to make? This conversation uh, had those experts. Dr. Anthony Fauci was also a part of that. We have seen uh, how people uh, um, 
uh, greatly respect him uh, and, and what he has to say. Um, and, and that's also vital because our people also, and why he should do those things, because our people need to also realize that we can pull in those experts as well and then pair them with our experts and we're getting the best information, the latest up-to-date information to keep our folks informed. That's exactly what we're trying to do. <clears throat> the other thing that we're fighting is that the vaccination has become politicized. I don't know how it became politicized because both the right and the left have agreed about the vaccination from the Trump administration to the Biden administration, they've agreed about the vaccination. We haven't agreed about anything else. We've agreed about that. But now that has become politicized. And, and this politicization of, of masks and everything else has just become redundant and uh, reprehensible at, because while we are debating about our particular political persuasions, people are dying, black, white, and brown. Uh, at disproportionate rates, more than what have died in World War II. When you look at that many Americans dying just in America alone, we have to get on one accord about this. We really, it's imperative. And we don't have long. We have to do it quickly. Right. Well, and look, I, look, as somebody who covers politics, uh, part of this was also, uh, when I look at um, all of the analysis coming out of the White House, where... There were people who were who were trying. I mean, the experts were trying to get Donald Trump uh, to say no, push wearing masks. His whole deal was, and even his they they showed him polling. His own poster said this actually helps you. He said it's going it's going my base is not going to like it, not going to do it. When when so when it became that political, when it became all about oh red states, uh, uh, open them up. We don't want y'all wearing masks. It's y'all blue states who are causing the problems. That was the moment when a president has to set aside partisanship and say, no, 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 no. I'm leading the country. I'm not leading red states. I'm leading red and blue. I'm not leading Republicans. I'm leading Republicans and Democrats. Because, and, and I, I've said this uh, to conservative black pastors. Uh, uh, E.W. Jackson of Virginia stood up there and said, God is going to protect me from COVID. He later tested positive. Yeah. And I keep saying, y'all, the Lord also sent doctors. Right. Well, so listen, of, listen to them. We've had a lot of we've had a lot of preachers to die. A lot. A, I mean, a lot of preachers to die. Some of them were friends of mine. Some of them were people I've known for years. And we have to understand that faith without works is dead. Being alone, you can have great faith, but you still have to have works. If you have a heart attack, you still call an ambulance. If you break a leg, you still have the bone set. That doesn't negate that you have faith in God. And I think it's important that we dispel all of those kinds of myths. It's unfortunate that we've been down the political road, that we've been down unprecedented, unlike anything I have ever seen in my entire life. But we also have a pandemic that did not care about whether the state was red or blue. And some of those states that were red and bragging about their freedom and their freedom to make their own choices, their freedom led to a spike in the rates that became so reprehensible that thousands and thousands of people died because the virus doesn't stop at red. It doesn't stop at blue. It doesn't care if you're independent. It doesn't care if you're an atheist, agnostic, a, a believer. It doesn't care whether you speak in tongues indiscriminately it is looking for a host and your body is a host and if somebody breathes sneezes sings shouts around you and you are not protected you can be infected and you're right we've lost great people harry jackson was a dear friend of mine we didn't always agree about everything but we were great friends it's such a tragedy to lose him at a moment that he just got married again. He was happy. He was excited. Uh, he was a cancer survivor. He beat cancer twice, and then we lost him. And it was just uh, really sad to see. Anytime we lose anybody, we, can, we can't divide. And historically, you know, black people didn't do this. We didn't divide about everything and fight about everything. There was an underlying loyalty that existed in our community when I was growing up that is fading away now. We cannot take on uh, take on the the tactics and the ideologies of, of those who once oppressed us. I mean, number one, we're minorities. We can't afford to divide like that. We can't right. afford to fight about everything. We need each other. 
We we need a Roland Martin. We need Don Lemon. We need T.D. Jakes. We need Noel Jones. We we need everybody we've got in order to survive everything else that's fighting us, killing us, shooting our kids, shooting us down in the street, breaking in our house and shooting us in our own beds. We, we, we have to be more united than we've ever been before. And social media by its nature itself lends to divisiveness and tribalism and cable news where you can get the truth you like and the flavor you enjoy and avoid the facts and move them, uh, uh, move into feelings. And I think we've got to get away from that. That's why I did what I did, knew it would be controversial, put it on our YouTube channel, made it available for everybody to see, not try to make them make a decision. I didn't take a side. I just gathered information so I could put it out there. I respect the intelligence of our people that if they have the right information, they can make the right decisions about their bodies and then call your doctor. Don't just make your decision. You would have a heart attack and call a congressman. Right. So why would you bring <laughs> politics into the help? I don't get it. I don't understand it. I mean, we go to the very people who are fighting about science, go to a doctor every week or every month or every year. Why have we gotten to this and become ignorant? Uh, you're absolutely right. And trust me, those members of Congress who are fighting this as well, they will go to their doctor real quick. If they right. get sick. Right. <laughs> President Trump did. Straight to the doctor. <laughs> yeah, precisely. <laughs> I mean, straight to the doctor. Just, just straight helicopter ride. To, straight to the doctor. Didn't go to Congress or anybody. Didn't go to Giuliani. He went to the doctor. So let's, let's be smart. Let's be smart before we're dead. I am sick to death of burying our people. I'm sick to death of crying people grieving because they didn't get to say goodbye to their parents, didn't get to spend their last moments with them, no closure, no decent funeral, graveside services, everybody wrapped up like mummies trying to say goodbye to their wives. This is, this is what this is going to do for the next decade to the emotional well-being of American people in general will have long-lasting effects, the trauma is going to last after the virus is gone. The quicker we get past this, the quicker the economy gets up, the quicker we get back to our normal lifestyles, our churches open, our, our things we like to do, golfing, fishing, going to movies, going to a club, whatever you're into, becomes available to you on the other side of this pandemic. And so anything that will get us to the other side, we need to study it open-mindedly. All right, then. Well, Bishop T.D. Jakes, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, give my best to your wife, and, and I'll tell uh, my preacher wife you said hello. Yes, give her my best. God bless you. Good to see you again. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honoré, the nation's first black surgeon general, Dr. Joycelyn Elders, John Hope Bryant, he is the founder of Operation Hope, Senator Kamala Harris of California, Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin, Congresswoman Karen Bass, and Commissioner Omari Hardy, Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams, Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens, Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, Howard University student, Pastor Jamal Bryant, a uh, doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, uh, General Kit Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George is Benjamin, uh, executive director of the Ameri American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudill, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard 
University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York. William Springs, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, Executive Director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congressman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Anne Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician, Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State Attorney, Aisha Brayboy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division Strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she is a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and wellness specialist, Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand, Dr. Julian Malvo, economist, president, Emerita of Bennett College, coroner, Michael Fowler, is a mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist, Suzette Clark, Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews, Jr., Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District, Dr. Leon McDougall, president-elect of the National Medical Association, Jana Bailey, Mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You're getting the top medical experts, the top business experts, the top political experts, the top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.